Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to see if this Marantz 2250B still makes the power it made when it was new. So if you look inside this receiver you will see a manufacture date of somewhere in 1976. That's almost 45 years ago and I think it's going to be really cool to see if this receiver still makes as much power as it made when it was new. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit higher than 50 but we'll see what happens. I'm also doing this because I'm about to restore this receiver and I'm going to be making a series of videos on the restoration process. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see those videos and check out the final result. Now as far as I know this receiver is completely original with the exception of new light bulbs that I installed in a previous video. With that being said this will be a pretty good example for doing a baseline test to see if these receivers still make the power they made when they were new. However, before I test the power of this receiver I'm going to check its health, and by that I mean I'm going to check the power supply voltage, the DC offset, and the amplifier bias, or idle current. If the idle current is too high, or out of whack in some way, we run the risk of making the output transistors explode. No, they're not actually going to explode, but they will fail if there's too much uh, current pumped through them, so we're going to make sure that's not going to happen because we're about to run a torture test. We're going to see the most this receiver can do. The highest amplitude it can make a sine wave without clipping. How do I look? The first thing I'm going to do is just follow the uh, audio adjustment. So basically, the first one is easy, the power supply. There's going to be a pin on this board, J something. J804 and 805 is what we're going to measure between. So here's how I've got my probes set up because I, I don't have very nice things. Um, I'm going to, with the power off, I'm going to find 804 and 805. And I see them right in here. Hopefully you can too. So I'll set it to DC voltage. I will turn on the receiver. And I see that we have 35.2 something volts. So that to me is fine and I'm just gonna leave that alone because I plan to completely restore this board at a later time. So that's cool. Let's move on to the DC offset. Now that one's very easy. That is just the uh, measurement between uh, the positive speaker terminal and ground on each one. So we'll just hook this guy up to ground right here. And now we'll start with the left channel. So I'll turn the receiver back on. I have the speakers turned on. And the relay is clicked in. I see that the DC offset is 4 millivolts. That's actually really good. I like that a lot. Now we're going to move to the right channel. And we see the DC offset is 6 millivolts. That's also really good. You want this to be as close to zero as possible. Bias is the next thing we're going to check, which is the idle current. So, I'll turn this off again. I see that I need to go to pins 708 and 710 on the amplifier boards. So we'll do each one. I'm going to look for 710. It could be on the bottom of the board, which would be, you know, annoying, but that's okay. Yeah, it looks like it is on the bottom of the board. Oh, goodness. Let's go this way instead. 710. 708. And then I will turn the receiver on. And I will see what I've got here. So I've got some voltage, which is good. We are looking for 10 millivolts. That's fantastic. Let's check the other channel. 708. And we have 710. Turn it on once again. We'll get some voltage. 14. 15. Again, not bad at all. Seeing 16 when it's supposed to be 10, that's, that's not too bad. So in order to measure the maximum watts per channel out of this receiver, we're going to need to use load resistors to emulate a load. Otherwise, if we used these, we'd all go deaf, and nobody wants that. So, I've got two here. I've got one on each channel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the right channel amplifier. So what I've done is I've taken my 
uh, oscilloscope probe. I've hooked it up to each terminal here, and that's going to give us a waveform on here. And then I'm going to take my voltmeter, and I'm going to measure the voltage. Now, a modern oscilloscope would just tell you the voltage, but uh, we're working with something kind of special here, and I don't really want to think with that. So let's turn it on. And be sure you're not going to have any shorts, because that would be bad when you're pumping maximum power through. Um, we'll switch this to uh, AC volts. We'll turn this on. Okay, there's the old camera. So we've got our good old PA Tone app open. We will turn the sound on. And we will bring up the volume to see if we have voltage and a waveform. And we have both. So let's, uh, let's get this to stop dancing here. Okay, good. So what we're looking for in this waveform is flat spots at the top and bottom. So if I turn up the volume, we see that happening. I've got it at maximum volume right now. This is what you call clipping. We've got 29 volts AC going through here, but that's not the number we're looking for. That's not maximum power. What we're looking for is, this, I'm, I'm turning the volume down here, we're looking for maximum power in which this thing can actually produce a proper sine wave. So we want to find the voltage at which clipping first starts. So if we look at the peaks and valleys here, so this is the right channel. We will call this 22.8 volts AC. Now let's switch to the left channel. So we've got those probes switched over. Got the tone playing. So let's bring the volume up. And let's look for that waveform at which clipping begins to happen. So I'd say it's about right there-ish. We'll call that good. For the left channel, we will call that 22.75 volts. Like I said, this truly is a torture test. I mean, if I put my hand on these heat sinks, they are warm. And if I put my hand on these resistors, they are especially warm. Almost hot. That's it's a lot. It's a lot we're putting this thing through, and it uh, seems to be handling it just fine. But that's what it was designed to do. So here we are at a uh, Ohm's Law calculator. So, like we had was 22.75 volts for the left channel, and that was going into 8 ohms. And that tells us that we had 64.69 watts per channel RMS coming out of the left side amplifier. Let's change this to 22.8 for the right side, and we'll see that we had 64.98 watts per channel. You know, that's a lot more than 50, I gotta say, but in my experience, and everyone who's worked on these knows this, they they underrated these, and they always produced more power than they actually uh, said they do. So, that's something kind of cool about these. You're always getting more than uh, is actually advertised for. So, to me, these are great numbers. This is a very healthy amplifier. So some of you may have just watched those results and seen that, you know, it's actually pretty good. But the question is, why would you restore this receiver if it works? It seems to work just fine. It's making more power than, it, than it's supposed to. It's making 65 watts per channel about, when it's only supposed to be making 50. Why would you go through and restore this? Well, the truth is, it's 45 years old and things break. That's really all there is to it. There are certain things on here that are prone to failure, and when you go through and restore these, you don't have any more problems. In my opinion, restoration is about reliability and making sure that this receiver is going to be working properly as long as possible. You won't have to take it off the shelf and say, oh, it's doing this again, or oh, now this is wrong, now i got to take it back to the tech and deal with this. No, none of that. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and thank you to all the new subscribers that have subscribed since this channel was started a few months ago. I'll see you in the next video.